Okay, let's get this show on the road. Unfortunately, I do apologize so, so much. I am two minutes late. It was really weird. This is a strange story to start off this uh, Friday feeling live stream, but I had a little thing in the corner of my screen. Just there, this thing here, this white dot. And I was trying to work out what it was. I was just putting my hand uh, wherever and I just couldn't work out what that little weird white thing was. And it turns out it's one of my crazy invisible cups, which I just couldn't see. Uh, so that's how we're starting off the Friday feeling today. Hello to you as you join it. Please do let me know where you are in the world and what time it is. That's how we always start off uh, this live stream that should hopefully bring you in to the relaxing weekend where you can have a bit of fun or you can make some YouTube videos. And as always, the regulars begin to join. So obviously you must have got notifications when the live stream went live, so do let me know. Hello to Fusion X. You've got four X's there. That's an impressive amount of X's. Xbox Legends Gaming. Hello to you. Howdy, howdy, Beanie Draws. I'm almost thinking you're a regular now on vidIQ. That's good to know. To Star Wars Gov, hello to you, Mixed Video Channel. Kristen Reviews, Anthony Goodley, MK Videos. Uh, PNW, is it Pacific Northwest Granny? Is that your abbreviation? I'm trying to remember all these little regular things that come in every week. Hello to you, Technical Rascals, Sound Empire. All mixed music videos. Wow, it sounds as if the three of you could do a collaboration. You all sound like sound experts. The Cruzy Way Jays. Hello to you. Xbox Legend Gaming. If you're that legendary, uh, what Xbox, ga Xbox games have you completed? Brian's Kitchen. Hello to you, sir. Luca Leonistor. Hello to you. Digital Jedi Master. Hello to you once again. I think you were here on Tuesday. VIP Man YT. I think you just said you were doing some homework while watching the live stream. And I feel quite honoured that you were able to multitask watching me while doing your homework. If that, if it's you who said that. Fanatics4, hello to you once again. Welcome back. Tom Nash is in the house. Hello. Uh, uh, I saw you joining yesterday when we had Jeremy Vest on and you were pounding in with as many questions as you could, uh, getting in there with a YouTube expert. Cookster, hello to you. I've got to be very careful when I pronounce your name. Uh, Team Autismpedia, I've heard in one of the comments on vidIQ this week that you're going to be joining us at Vid Summit. If so, make sure to um, check us out wherever we are. More than happy to say hello. If you want to do a quick video, absolutely see you there. Uh, Tom Tech, hello to you too. I was backing you up in the comments, I think, this week where uh, you were giving some constructive feedback about whether you preferred different videos or not. Somebody thought that was a bit too negative, but I had your back and I really appreciate the feedback you gave me there. iGame and Tech, welcome to you. Have I taught you a lot? That's wonderful to hear. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can teach you some more uh, in the future uh, episodes. I'm just talking here to the Doberman guy, one of our moderators in the background. I'm asking him to send me some screenshots, um, which hopefully you may see later on. And so I do apologize if I keep getting distracted. And if you hear my mechanical keyboard, listen to, listen to these wonderful, glorious sounds of a mechanical keyboard next to a microphone. Would you find this soothing or really irritating? To me, when I'm typing, it's a bit like Bender off of Futurama or Homer Simpson going, oh, such a good noise. Uh, but I know uh, people may not have positive preferences towards that. Anyway, let me know where you are in the world now, and I'll do some shout outs for who is the most remote and is uh, awake at the uh, most insane time. I'm going to guess Beanie Draws is awake at, let's see, I'm going to go for 2 a.m. in the morning in Perth, Australia. That's going to be uh, my guess. Brian's Kitchen says it's irritating that I'm using the mechanical keyboard. I apologize. I won't do that again anymore on this live stream. Beanie Draws prefers soft keyboards as well. I just love the mechanical noise, the switches. It's wonderful when you're doing the typing. It's almost like playing a piano. But yeah, the, the computer... The computer... Um, God, I can't think of a word. 
I, I the words are lost on me, but it's like an engineer or a, a developer a playing the piano as a mechanical keyboard. But for anybody who's listening to it, I'm sure it's just a din. Zealand Comics, you are from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What time is it there? I think that's sort of t- like the east coast of the United States kind of area. Beanie draws it's 4 a.m. in Melbourne, not Perth. Similar time zones. I do apologise, but that is a crazy time. What are you doing up right now? If it's because you set a reminder to join vidIQ livestream, awesome. Uh, otherwise, are you an insomniac? That's an interesting question to maybe uh, find out. I hope you, you do get some sleep at some point. Dr. Sten Ekberg is in the house. Hello to you. I really enjoyed doing your live stream um, before. Uh, Tara Support, I've just noticed you're in the live stream. This is interesting. Uh, it's 11 p.m. wherever you are. Uh, you said you'd given up a little bit on live streams because you hadn't had your channel reviewed. So I'm going to try and make this promise to you because you've been in a lot of live streams and I am aware of the comments that you send on vidIQ. So I'm guaranteeing you, if I can remember, in fact, I'm going, to, I'm going to have to use my mechanical keyboard again here, but I am guaranteeing you a channel review if you were there on uh, Tuesday. So do try and let me know. Even like, I mean, the Doberman guy moderator is here as well. So Tara Support. Make sure to tell the Doberman Rob authorizes you to get a channel review on Tuesday. And that's because you are a big contribu- contributor to this channel, not because uh, you've been complaining. I know you've been complaining because you've been here since the very start of the live streams, and I, I'm aware of that. So, yeah, I want to give you a live stream channel review on Tuesday, if I remember. So it's 7 p.m. for Super User Mods, 2 p.m. for Zealand Comics, not Zealand Comics, I pronounced that wrong last time. Brian's Kitchen is in Canada. If you didn't know, I'm in Vancouver, Canada, so where are you in Canada? Big place, lots of time zones, like you could be in, is it Halifax, St. John's, which is four hours ahead? I'm never super uh, up to speed with uh, the time zones here in Canada. In Canada, Malud Tagai, apologies if I pronounced your name wrong. It's 7 p.m. there in Morocco. Uh, for Tom Nash in Israel, I do know where you live. It's at 9 p.m. there. Fusion XX, 7 p.m. That must mean you're in Portugal or the UK. Um, so, yeah, you never went live on this channel. People ask, I haven't thought of a formula for Look Now TV, but it is at 2 p.m. in New York there. Uh, for the Netherlands there, Tom Tech, it must be 8 p.m., 11 p.m. for you, Liquid Ocelot in Pakistan. Fab, uh, Jir- Jirimai, 7 p.m. there. Kanju Creations, uh, 22 midnight. God, that's one of those weird um, time zones where it's, not only hours in front or behind, but it's also half an hour. I don't know how people are able to cope with half an hour time time zones. That would just freak me out. Uh, Luca Leon Nistro, it's 9 p.m. there in Romania. Uh, sorry there, Milor, Milud, Milord. I did uh, pronounce it wrong. I do apologize. Um, Mose, the driver, is asking here, what happened to vidIQ earnings display? Was it removed in a free version? The answer to that is it was removed, but in all versions. And this is because YouTube uh, asked us through their terms of service that they didn't want us to have estimated earnings on uh, our content because it was confusing YouTubers uh, who were probably complaining to YouTube that why is VidIQ saying that we're earning this much when it was a fixed estimate, whereas my earnings were completely different. So we completely understand with that. And uh, yes, that's the reason why it's been removed. It is uh, 10 past 1 for Mo the Driver in Kansas, USA. 4.10 for Xbox Legend Gaming. Is that in the morning? If so, maybe you are in Australia as well. Maybe you're in Melbourne and you can do some sort of collab with uh, Beanie Draws. Now, the, the estimated earnings, Beanie, wasn't way off. It was just fixed at a figure which we thought was a decent average. So, yeah, there was like hundreds of... There's always... Big fluctuations throughout the the year, so it was just a guide, and I think people misrepresent misinterpreted that as um like this is definitely what you're going to earn. And other, let me say that other um platforms have um uh, have suffered the, the same fate as us in that uh, respect. Savvy boy, hello to you in Poland. Gamer Walker two point zero. Uh, we're not doing channel reviews today. We do those on a Tuesday. So if you do want to be in chance of a channel review, make sure to, make sure to join the live stream 
uh, on Tuesday. Uh, you were in Welland, Ontario, Brian. I was in Toronto and Ottawa, which are in Ontario, but that's quite a big place in Canada. Uh, but good that you're representing there uh, from the um, from the north. Interesting revelation here. I've just discovered this um, goblet, I call them the vidIQ goblets, is not affected by the green screen. There are some weird things here with my effects. Is that this um, goblet, which is actually yellow, this is not a green um, goblet, but it is affected by the um, light. Look, that's yeah. I'm just entertaining myself here, but yeah, this uh, goblet is not affected by the live stream, so maybe I should use this more often. Also, uh, top tip here: if you do get plastic cups, don't put them in the dishwasher because it warps them and it looks terrible. But uh, I just need to make sure that I um, hydrate myself during these live streams. Oh, well, everybody, stand back. Stand back. Your real estate whisperer is in the house. Do not come near my webcam today. Please. I'm going to get a restraining order. You need to be 50 meters away from your screen now to make sure that you do not affect my webcam because I can't have a third live stream where the webcam goes down so that's a warning to you real estate whisperer you you are you are marked on my card but hello to you welcome to the uh, live stream okay so i know where most of you are in the world right now and it's 4 a.m for some of you so a big thumbs up uh for your dedication here at vidIQ the next question is what do you intend to do with the rest of the hours that you have remaining in this weekend for some of us it is at friday and we're approaching the weekend for some of you, it's Friday night and the weekend has started and you're probably enjoying some pizza, watching TV, or even, in one person's case, doing their homework. For some of you, Saturday is just starting. So I want to know whether you're going to be doing any uh, YouTube work or you're looking to relax uh, this weekend. Quick um, update from uh, me. Uh, where I'm potentially thinking of moving to a new place to get a... Um, to get more room and perhaps build a proper vidIQ studio rather than just this boxy green screen that you see here. Uh, so we're going to be maybe doing some mock shopping at IKEA to potentially furnish our new place. So not much video work going on this weekend, but uh, certainly preparation for more video content in the future. So what are you going to be doing this weekend? Do let me know. Beanie Draws is trying to finish and edit and not get bored while doing it. Oh, Beanie Draws hates video, video editing. On the contrary, I absolutely love the video editing process. It's capturing the footage that really frustrates me. I love having all the jigsaw pieces and putting them together to create a compelling story. Uh, Real Estate Whisperer is going to Georgia for your daughter's regional gymnastics meet. Let's everybody wish uh, Real Estate Whisperer's daughter all the best of luck in the uh, state gymnastics meet. Uh, we hope you get... How do they do it these days as in gymnastics? Do they give like marks out of 10 or is it marks out of 6? Um, this is what I'm going to give um, your daughter at the, um, at the gymnastics meet. So just bear with me one second. You can play the um, Jeopardy music maybe in your head at this point. Um, I don't know how to write a five now. Uh, let's do let's do that again. I've made a complete hash of this one. There we go. I've remembered how to write numbers. So I predict for artistic um, presentation, uh, you are going to get a five point nine. Um, so yeah, good good luck there. What else do we have for people this week? And um, so it sounds as if Fab Jeremiah is going to watch some movies, some horror movies. What's your favorite horror movie? I'm not a particular fan of horror movies, I must admit, although it was quite um, the new It movie was well, last year's new It movie was quite enjoyable. Oh, sorry, uh, Real Estate Whisperers, can you then translate 5.9 into like 9.7? Because, of course, nobody's perfect. Uh, oh, thank you, Xbox Legend Gamer. You're telling me you're going to be right back. I I had no idea you were leaving the um, live stream, but good to know that you're coming back. Uh, Smoky Tech 2.0, I did review your channel at the um, weekend. You need to work on a good channel trailer. Um, busy, So you're busy making a channel trailer. And don't forget, I recommend that you look at Jio 4G content on your channel, which seems to be really successful. 
Uh, Fanatics 4 is hosting an interview with Crunchyroll, planning to use the added social following from that gig to help my channel grow. Also, more dollars is always nice. Did you ever get back to Kids vs. Dad Gaming? Was there a collab going on there? I do remember I tried to put you two together uh, last week. Um, so, yeah, let me know if that's going on. Uh, the Star Wars Gov, I will be going to a sci-fi convention tomorrow, and you'll be watching Black Mirror. Are you going to be doing any filming and capturing any footage out at the um, conference for your uh, channel, maybe? That would be interesting to know. Do let me know there. Look Now TV, this weekend, like always, producing more content. That's what we like to hear. Uh, always spending time productively. Uh, so look, the real estate whisperer is hoping that she gets a 9.95. Let's all pray that she does. Let's let's pray for the Georgia State Nationals uh, performance of a lifetime. Oh, congratulations to you, fan club. You're going to be uh, completing what set? You're going to reach 7,000 subscribers today. Awesome. We're going to be getting on to success stories uh, a little in a little bit more uh, into this uh, live stream. Uh, the Doberman is telling me, the Doberman looks as if he's the only moderator in here at the moment, so everyone give the Doberman a, a round of applause here for his continued um, efforts here to moderate. It's like just in every single uh, moderate um, live stream that we do, but he needs coffee and he needs its stats. So if anybody can get some coffee to um, the Doberman guy, that would be a brilliant. I mean, you have dogs, surely. Can you not teach one of them to nip over to Starbucks and get you your, your favorite order? Um, so yeah, I can see some celebrations coming up, but just hold those celebrations until I get to that point. I always leave time to, um, congratulate you all on your celebrations. So just hold those thoughts for a little second. Cool. Fanatics 4 and Kids vs. Gaming are going to be on your podcast in the next couple of weeks. So you have a podcast as well. Awesome. Interesting news here, actually. I'm going to be having on a guest soon who is a podcast slash sound effects expert. Hopefully next Thursday in a live stream. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, he, I, you may notice that I'm from the UK, but this, uh, but my accent is really strange and northern and a bit weird. But this guy has the most beautiful English accent. He sounds like a Bond villain, basically. So um, it will be really interesting to listen to him um, next Thursday if we can get him on. Uh, we'll, obviously, we'll do a reminder and notifications on the live stream. Um, when that comes up um, next week. Um, has anybody else got any more uh, weekend things that they're doing here? Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you, Real Estate Whisperer. You are sending coffee with Doberman Guy's work. Look Now TV is drinking a fresh espresso right now. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no opinions on coffee or tea. I hate hot drinks. I'll reluctantly have hot chocolate. Uh, when it's cold, but I'm more of a soft drinks um, kind of guy, like Dr. Pepper, Iron Brew, for people who are from the UK. Uh, obviously, Coke is a, or one of my tipples. And also, I've been doing this recently, I've been having Fresca, but mixing it with an, some like a very concentrate juice, like orange juice or grapefruit juice. It's really nice. has no calories in it, no sugar, but it's really acidic, and uh, I just went to a dentist yesterday, and uh, they told me that I need to stop having uh, acidic liquids. So um, that's another top tip for you there on the vidIQ. We're giving them all out today. Uh, don't put plastic uh, goblets in a dishwasher, and uh, don't drink acidic drinks thinking that because they've got no sugar and calorie in, calorie in them, they're good for your teeth. Uh, so, Liquid Ocelot, Ocel are you saying that I'm having uh, crystal clear audio or this person on Thursday is? Uh, the audio will be brilliant. Unfortunately, when it goes through this live stream, it'll probably degrade a little bit. But if you visit this person's channel, uh, I think it's Mike Russell is a person hopefully we're going to have on, but no promises just yet. But if you go to Mike Russell's channel, it's all about creating sound effects and voiceovers and things. It's awesome stuff. Uh, so Blue Pickle, you say you are going to sub. Are you now subbing to vidIQ? Have I managed to uh, bring in at least one subscriber from these live streams? That's brilliant to hear. Uh, Look Now TV is thinking about visiting Manchester, UK. That would be the first time going. Are you? Do you live in the UK or are you thinking of visiting from abroad? Um, yeah, Manchester's okay, but for me personally, it's the wrong side of the Pennines, and that's only a Northern English joke anyone um, will will get. 
Um, yeah, so a few people are hearing uh, of, of the name Mike Russell. Yeah, he's um, met him at the VidCon Europe, and he is awesome. And do you agree with me that he potentially sounds like a Bond villain with such that wonderful English accent that he has? Yeah, don't forget to hit that like button. I agree, Real Estate Whisperer. Thank you for the tip there. Right, let's move on to success stories. I think we've done... We, we are now finished with uh, the weekend plans. So I want to know what success stories you had on YouTube this week. I'm trying to think of particular vidIQ ones that we've had recently. We passed 150,000 subscribers, but that was maybe a week or two ago. And I think the success story this week is I've done like four live streams. I've done four continuous days of live streams. And I've still got some videos ready to rock and roll at the weekend and next week. So it's been a good, good week of producing content. Uh, without any necessarily big um, analytical gains. So let me know what you've been doing this week on YouTube and your successes. For example, Fusion uh, Forex has hit 307 subscribers in four months. Congratulations to you. Hunter03, small channel, but you've made a, a big milestone. You've got 400 views on your channel. Congratulations to you. Just imagine if all 400 people have those 400 people are in a single room and they were looking at your content. It'd make you feel fantastic. Uh, 300,000 subscribers. Is that correct now for you, Look Now TV? You're about, you was about 140 subscribers in the last year. Wow, so you've grown three, you've gone from basically zero to 300,000 subscribers in the space of a year. Congratulations to you. Awesome. That's That's amazing. Brilliant work. Um, what else do we have here? It's Fan Club is about to crack 2 million views. Congratulations to you. Uh, Luca, you are going to make 15,000 uh, views this weekend. Uh, sorry, look now, TV. Are you saying that you now have 14,000 subs? I'm getting a little confused there. Do clarify for us. Uh, Tara Support, you're at 3,940 subscribers, so it sounds like you're very close to hitting 4,000 subscribers. Congratulations to you. Oh, right, sorry. So Look Now TV was at 140,000 subscribers last year. Now they're at 300,000, so basically the channel's doubled in size in a year, which is fantastic. Fanatics 4 are crawling up to 2 million video views, and you've made a few connections with some fellow Nintendo creators. I always wonder like if i was starting a channel now i i don't know how i would focus on nintendo content even if it was my passion because nintendo seem to be such bullies and so restrictive in the the content that like they, they produce i may be completely wrong with that it's uh, very much a broad naive opinion but yeah if you were to give me a bit more about how difficult it is to work in the nin nintendo sector of youtube because they're always putting copyright, well, not copyright strikes, but limiting your content in terms of advertisement would be interesting to know. The Doberman guy has some success stories, but I'm going to save them for a little section later on, Doberman. So thank you for that. But we're going to go into a bit more detail in your stuff very soon. Beanie Draws is at um, 15,000 subs with a quite a high click-through rate of 6.8%. Just got that analysis today. Um, this week, I probably assume. We're going to have a look at that briefly later on, although we've done lots of uh, live stream stuff uh, very recently. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Digital uh, Digital Jedi Master. No successes this week, of course. No videos this week. Mm, could be a clue. Yeah, maybe you need to push out some more content. Fusion X. Here's a big one for Fusion X. You're going to hit 1,000 views very soon. You cannot well wait. Congratulations. Uh, Tara Support is 200,000 views per month. Um, but 230 views for one subscriber. I'm not sure what that means. Okay, Fanatics Forest, come back to us here. We've not had any problems with them. It'd be tough if we did Let's Plays, but we don't use much of their assets. Ah, so it's not, strictly speaking, a Let's Play gameplay channel. Of course, you do a lot more uh, commentary type of stuff and news updates. So you, I guess you kind of avoid that pitfall of direct gameplay, which seems to hit so many um, people in the Nintendo area. VIP Man, still doing your homework, but you do have uh, 1.4 million views. Danny Likes Pizza, 
Welcome to you. Are you back after a, a bit of a break? I do remember we did a channel review on you. Oh, it must have been a month or two ago. But you've hit 800,000 subscribers. Uh, I've, I would also say that for the um, Real Estate Whisperer, success stories include breaking um, webcams over the internet. It's quite a mean feat, so I'd put that down as a success for you. Um, and hopefully success this weekend uh, with the Georgia Gymnastic State event for your daughter. I'm kind of losing exactly what you're doing this weekend, but something along those lines. Any any other success stories? One, yeah, William Murphy Golf, 160 60 subs this week. On track for um, my 200 subs for the year. You're going to smash it if you're already at 160. What, we've got eight months left of a year to get another 40 subs. Easy peasy. Let's see if you can maybe target to do that by the end of um, June. Go. See if you can hit that target. Good luck for you. Uh, Hunter 3, watching your stream and voicing over my trailers plus T. Wow, I'm wondering if um, if I shouted loud enough, uh, my voice would end up on your trailer. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, good news, everyone. Um, VIP man has now finished your homework. Can't be much homework if you've done it in 26 minutes. But, well, have you, have you done a good job of it? Yeah, that, mm, curious. Do you have to do your homework before the weekend starts for you? Yeah, double success there for Real Estate Whisperer. You broke it twice in one week. Uh, some legendary skills there. Uh, a news, news alert, everybody. Xbox Legend Gaming has returned. He did let us know that he was leaving, but he has now returned. So, phew, I managed, I managed, I'm relieved that your watch time is returning to the live stream. Uh, do appreciate that. Um, here we go. Dr. Sten Eckbird is back. You've hit 1,000 subscribers on Monday, 4,000 hours of tu on 4,000 hours of watch time on Tuesday. So it's almost as if the uh, YouTube partner program stars align for you there. Uh, now you've just got to apply it for monetization again, if that's what you're doing on your channel. That's an interesting question. Do you actually want to monetize your content? Because I know your videos are strictly speaking about your services and perhaps products that you sell. So you're interested in making an extra book or two on monetized content? Uh, do let me know in the comments. Kronos, just hit 20,000 subscribers. Congratulations to you, sir. Awesome stuff. And do we have any more comments here? Um, let's see. D Diana Jennings asking about monetization. Is there any update on monetization waiting list? You've been eligible for three months now and still waiting. I suppose the first question is, you have made sure that you've actually applied for monetization. It doesn't automatically happen. You do have to apply for that through the YouTube Partner Program. And the last update, but this was a couple of months ago, was that uh, all of the backlog should be resolved by the end of April. So you you probably fall into that category. But YouTube are still being very vague on this. And in one of the news stories that I'm going to look at later on, uh, we will find out a little bit more about that. So we don't have any personal updates and it's very much a channel by channel basis. Uh, so yeah, don't don't have an answer for you there, unfortunately. Uh, Stenet Bird is saying, you don't have to reapply. I put the add on to one side where the suggested videos are. Oh, so are you saying that you were in the monetization program before, then you lost out because of the requirements, but because you're now met the requirements again, you automatically get in again? That would be that would be interesting to know for other YouTubers, actually. Maybe if you give, give us like a 50-word uh, summary, and I'll be more than happy to read it out here on, on the chat um, because I will not miss it. Uh, Beanie Draws is thankful that they qualify for monetization in 2015. I think for my original channel, I qualified in 2013, and that was when the require it was um it, that was when YouTube first spread monetization out to the world, and it was it became really easy to get in, and then it's taken a couple of years for YouTube to I guess optimize how they do their um, partner pr program. Yeah, and here we go. Look Now TV was on YouTube before money was a thought. Yeah, so a lot of video creators in the earlier days, well, for the first four, five, six years, it was very much an invite-only program, and people just made videos because they enjoyed making videos. All of a sudden, it's a business. It turns into the Wild West. There's all sorts of people, like prospectors, moving in and trying to earn a book, and I think that's what's turned YouTube into the juggernaut that it is, but it's also a juggernaut with wheels that keep... Um, detaching from the juggernaut and causing mayhem everywhere. 
for example, Logan Paul, and so on. Okay, I'm just waiting for Dr. Sten possibly to give us his um, full explanation, and then we're going to go into a big success, success story for a particular person who is currently on uh, this uh, this live stream. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Sten is back. Thank you. Uh, you were in the partner program. One video had over 10,000 in views. Okay, so that's what may allowed you to be originally in the program. Got kicked out a few months ago. Um, and because I was already part of YTPP, they just have a look to see if you follow the guidelines. Okay, so it seems as if for people who were in but then got kicked out, but now meet the requirements again. It's a much quicker process to get back in. That's how I'm interpreting it. Um, but as with YouTube, the s stories are so individual and change that what uh, what went well for Sten doesn't necessarily work for others. Like this is other person in the chat who's saying that they're still waiting three months later to get into uh, the partner program. Um, winter is coming. XX. What is the best way to get subs on a gaming channel? Uh, make a, make a content that you're passionate about in terms of gaming and try and answer a question that's not been asked before. For example, if you're interested in Fortnite, then uh, find something really specific in Fortnite that maybe nobody else is covering and you've perhaps found a niche and then just go into that and produce as much content as you can. But gaming is a, a hard, it's harder every day to break into the genre where everybody, all the all of these younger YouTubers, these people who are in school, whose um, passion is to become a YouTuber, that's where all they're all heading. Right, okay, here we go. We're going to do a big success story, uh, and this is a reward to a certain moderator who does a stunning job every time uh, looking at um, all of the chat we have. And he was one of the first person, first people we did a channel review on. Now, I'm not trying, I am, or VidIQ, not trying to take any credit here for the success of um, the channel um, because it, the most of the work and the fundamentals were probably there already. But YouTube has turned this channel into a, a bit of a um, rising star type of situation. It's still a relatively small channel, but before the channel review, this channel was teeny tiny. So let's see if I can get my internet working properly here before I show you this channel. Uh, here we go. Right, I'm gonna switch it to this screen and you should now be able to see uh, some videos here. These are the Doberman guys videos, the very first ones he published um, like a few years ago, a couple of months ago. And the the when we were doing the uh, channel review, um, what we said was that these thumbnails were good, like have fundamentals such as the, uh, the logo and the photo quality was good, but perhaps the thumbnails didn't have enough focus on them or the text was a bit too distracting. Uh, for example, this one here, we've got a picture of a person, but a lot of green shrubbery, can barely pick out the dogs. Um, maybe you need to focus more on a particular object uh, on the, the dog and um, um, work on the thumbnails to maybe get these the viewers into the content more. And so this is kind of what the thumbnails look like. And up to about three months ago, it's pretty much the same formula. Some thumbnails were better than others. But then look at the transformation in the thumbnails since then. Look how a simple change in the font color makes these thumbnails more appealing. And how now the focus of the thumbnails is, is so much stronger. Like we, such as one here, why does a dog bark? And a big picture of a dog. Or um, what is this channel about? And it's a really close up of a dog and some eyes. Or this one here, which is quite a teasy one with the dog's ears perked up. 25 facts about the Doberman. And now, so, so all of the, these simple changes to thumbnail. So let's have a look at beforehand. We had views of like 600, 100, 700. And then pretty much the first switch to new thumbnails, 13,000, 9,000. 
Still a couple not performing too well, but yeah, these are the ones with all the thumbnails. And then these new ones with the slight change in thumbnails, 3,000. There's still some videos that don't quite perform as well. We've still got like a couple of hundred ones. But another one here, this is the most successful one here. Really good focus on just to like two different uh, breeds of a Doberman, I guess. 46,000 views. Here again, really strong thumbnails. And this this um, channel is starting to build momentum, like serious momentum. The channel now has 2,500 subscribers. You're getting view counts now of, I think where it was before, it was like 100 to 300 views. Now the average channel, average video might get 600 to 1,000 views, more successful ones, a few more 1,000 views. And this channel is just blowing up at the moment. Um, we've just had some... Uh, Analytics come here, come in here from the Doberman guy. So look at the phenomenal change here uh, from February. And then at the beginning of March, look at how this watch time is just going up like uh, the YouTube mountain. Uh, phenomenal growth. I mean, it must have been down here. The watch time must have been like maybe a few hundred minutes. Now we're looking at like 6,000, 9,000. Uh, astonishing growth there. Uh, do we have some view counts or is that watch time as well? That's watch time as well. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to say it like as a success story. And we don't want to take the, the credit here. We just want to say to the Doberman, like some simple changes to thumbnails and perhaps the content can make such a humongous difference. Um, and yeah, like congratulations. Wonderful stuff there. And as a moderator, we just wanted to extend our personal uh, thank you for all the hard work he does here. And he's probably uh, like just sat there like almost in tears. It's like his Oscar moment here on vidIQ. Uh, it, like fantastic. And just do keep it up. Um, oh, the, yeah, another couple of things I wanted to show here. Like, so if we do a search for Doberman, like, is there a big audience for Doberman dogs? The vidIQ uh, tool here can tell you that uh, the average views for just a search Doberman is 400,000 views. So there is definitely interest in those videos. And because the Doberman guy has been focusing on this, what you would call niche topic of a uh, breed of dogs for a good few months, and that's all you've been doing, you're start now starting to break into the top searches for this particular area. So we have to scroll down a little bit, but ding, there we are. First one, 45,000 views from a 2,500 subscriber channel. And another one here, 13,000 views from a 2,500 subscriber channel. So, Doberman, you are doing everything right here. I would just continue what you're doing. Think similar ideas. Like, you could say, is the Doberman, uh, Doberman the wrong dog for you? That might be an idea of a slight difference. Can you have more breeds of dogs? Um for your uh, follow-up uh, competitive it's like the versus series of videos just a couple of quick ideas there but keep it up awesome stuff i'm here with big thumbs up uh because we you you re you uh, sort of rep representing the fundamentals that we teach here and uh it's a brilliant success story and one of the first channels uh, we uh, did a channel review on. Not that I'm saying that uh, every channel is going to succeed in the same way that Doberman does just because uh, it got a channel review, but you obviously have taken on board at least some of the advice we gave you along with all the fundamentals and the skills that you already had. It always takes talent from the video creator themselves. We we aren't just a, a hack button tool where you just click something and you get more views and subscribers. Ultimately, uh, we can help you make your content more discoverable, but you as a video creator have to create content that's worth watching. And certainly the Doberman is doing that. So yeah, uh, gushing praise there for the last five minutes. And thank you Doberman for sending me those screenshots just before or in the middle of the live stream when I was doing the typing on my keyboard. That is brilliant stuff. Right, okay. Where are we up to now? That was success stories. Uh, we're now moving on to uh, some uh, YouTube polls that I did um, this this week. The most interesting uh, result I had from you guys in the community 
was um, a poll I did on how many YouTube channels are you subscribed to? Because I'm always interested in knowing if people just subscribe to channels and then hardly watch any of the content. So 58% are subscribed to between 1 and 50. And then beyond, f it's, it's like having 50 channels on your television. Beyond that, it's like, can you keep up with the rest of these channels that you're subscribed to? Some are subscribed to over 100 channels, like 10%. Some are subscribed to over 200 channels on YouTube. So I'm suggesting potentially that you need to spring clean your YouTube uh, subscription box. Uh, let me know uh, your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to start reading some of them out soon. What I did as a follow-up to this is, okay, now we know roughly how many, um, and like good thousand votes there, awesome uh, engagement. Uh, now we know how many channels you subscribe to. The next question was, after I go through uh, some wonderful uh, images of this random person with a magnifying glass, we asked the question, uh, which was, um, how many of those YouTube channels that you're subscribed to do you actually watch? And the startling revelation is that you, 50% of you, watch a barely a quarter of the channels that you're subscribed to. Some hardcore people up here, 13% of you say that you watch almost all of the channels you're subscribed to in some way. So that was some interesting thoughts I got from uh, some polls I did this week. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think there in the uh, comments about those results. Does it reflect you? Do you subscribe to far too many channels and not watch them? I'd love to know. A real Estate Whisperer says, you have such a variety of what you're looking at on YouTube, you, you won't unsubscribe unless they do something offensive. So it's kind of like a, um, a, a an appreciation or a, a legacy uh, ticket to say, yeah, I'm going to subscribe to your channel, I'll help your analytics, um, but I might not watch any of your content. Um, Jeremy Vest, who we uh, talked to yesterday on the Creator Beta Studio Analytics, talked about uh, vanity analytics. And that might be one where you have so many of these subscribers, but so many of them are dead because people subscribe, but then don't actually watch any content. And I thought it was a, an interesting phrase to use, vanity uh, analytics. Uh, the PNW Granny has, you are subscribed to 500 channels. I didn't even know you could go up to 500 channels on YouTube. Kronos, you subscribe to 200, but you watch like uh, 10 of them. Uh, Extra Gaming, we've got a new record here. You are subscribed to 1,000 channels. Now, here we are. Is this because you're doing sub for sub? Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's what's um, causing all these bogus analytics. That people are doing lots of sub for subs, and uh, subscribing to all these channels and not contributing at all to actually watch time and stuff. So that's another reason why you shouldn't do sub for sub because it bloats uh, channels, subscriptions, uh, when there's no watch time on them. Don't do that. Uh, Nerd Schmerd, I do love that username. Uh, you subscribe to many, but it's hard to keep up with them all. Yeah, I absolutely agree. You only have so much time to watch so many videos. And uh, as the Taraz support says, you are only subscribed to vidIQ, and I do um, uh, kind of recommend that. Yeah, if you do want to subscribe to one channel only, uh, it might be vidIQ, just to help with uh, my own personal vanity to know that it's people who are actually interested in the content that we do here. Uh, Myers Tech, uh, you were, what, subscribed to 70 to 100% of channels? Um, oh, sorry, you watch 76 to 100% of the channels. That's awesome. Good to know. Uh, you hate to put, you hate to unsub from the ones that you've subscribed to, uh, PNW Granny. Yeah, it's almost like, am I gonna hurt this person's feelings? Um, it's in, but you should look at your subscriber analytics, and on average, like a third of the people who subscribe to you each um, each month will unsubscribe. Those analytics can obviously change, but it would be it's amazing to see how many subscribers you actually lose. You could say, like, I gained 500 subscribers this month, but the, in reality, you might have gained 800 subscribers and lost 300. And so do check those analytics. Oh, here we go. Kids vs. Diamonds Gaming is in the house. You've taken advice, gone into spam settings, and added a load of sub keywords, and I've got sick from, and I've got sick of people having to ask for subs. Awesome. Are you finding your comments easy to manage these days? That was a tip that I gave people last week. If you're sick and tired of sub-for-sub -sub comments, you can block them 
uh, using the community option in YouTube. Uh, Bodegay Geek, uh, you spend almost half of your time on YouTube, on YouTube in channels you're not subscribed to because of autoplay. Interesting. Uh, does that ever pr prompt you to subscribe to those channels once YouTube's recommended them to you? Digital Jedi Master, you subscribe to a lot of people who have varying posting schedules. So you see a lot of them. Some have stopped posting. You're interested in 1%, 100% of everyone's content. That is true. Like there's a lot, there are channels who may sporadically post. Um, I know, for example, I'm subscribed to Nerd City. It's an awesome channel about YouTube type stuff, which I recommend you all watch. But they post very sporadically. Um, so I can fit them into my uh, YouTube watching schedule when they do get uh, a new video out. Oops, I'm getting my goblet tied up on my headphones there. Good kids versus that get kids versus that gaming. You now get zero subfers of comments. Brilliant. Fresh start. I don't have a lot of time to watch YouTube, so my ratio isn't very good. That's uh, the typical dilemma for all video creators. I spend far too long making videos and not enough time watching other people's content to learn new skills and find out what's going on in the YouTube universe. Do you do the same? Do you, do you like have OCD on content creation instead of uh, watching videos? Um, I certainly do need to have a better uh, viewing creating balance. Absolutely. Kronos here just pointing out that political channels obviously uh, often have big variations in their sub counts uh, because of um, certain issues that cause a lot of subscribers to unsubscribe. Digital Jedi Master likes watching videos while working, so a bit of multitasking there. Yeah, Beanie Draws has just looked into his subscriber analytics and discovered that he gained 735 subs this month but lost 148. That's not a bad ratio, actually. What, you're losing between 50, uh, 20, 25% of your subscribers? Um, that happens. Bazai Mental, do you have any tips for creating more content? Uh, yes, create more content. Come up with new ideas. Um, I, we'd have to know more about what your channel is. Um, if you're really passionate about the content that you're making, you should always have ideas in your head. And um, try not to let, try not to let um, questions and doubt come into your head. If you think you've got a good idea for a video, just go out there and do it. Don't let that um, the, the voice sitting on your shoulder giving you the negative vibes. Try and ignore them. Because every video you make, you're going to learn something from the video making process. And you're going to learn something from the reaction from your audience and the, the, the YouTube response in terms of analytics. Extra Gaming 2, thank you very much for the super chat donation here of two BAMs. I don't know what... Um, currency that is bma but so i'm just going to say two bams i absolutely love bams and i'm going to try and spend it somewhere where i can spend bams if people don't like me like the way i'm saying bams i do a apologize here we go we've got um a, a work schedule here from hunter three you've got school for six school for six hours a day homework for two hours a day 1.2 hours that's very specific and making videos and two and a half hours editing those videos and then rest, sleep, eat, exercise and watch videos. That's quite a schedule there. Um, <laughs> but I, I love the way that you've been able to really break down how your uh, daily, your, your weekday schedule is. It's fascinating. But yeah, here we go. Be Beanie Draws now is lamenting the 3,697 subscribers he has lost. If he hadn't lost a single subscriber, he'd be at 20,000. Oh, hello to Extra Sessions Media, our other mate, moderator joining today. He is in South Korea, so it's probably at an ungodly hour, uh, sometime in the morning. Thank you for joining. 
uh, and moderating today. It's always appreciated. You guys are just awesome. I can't remember the last time you weren't in attendance for any live stream. And like we've done four live streams this week, so you guys must be you you just like take the rest of the weekend off once once we finish with this live stream. In fact, Doberman, if you need a rest now, uh, I'm giving you I'm giving you the thumbs up to take the rest of the live stream off if you want to, or just join in on the, on the live stream and don't moderate if you don't if you need to. The Joss Speaks says you do about five videos a week and you spend four to five hours a day putting together each video, which includes recording, editing, uploading, promoting. Wow, that is serious dedication there. I hope your channel is uh, growing as a result of it. Um, to spend at least, what, 20 to 25 hours a week on a hobby or passion is like serious hardcore stuff. Hello there, WS Squad. Welcome to you too. Oh, Brian's... Here we go. This is a, a lovely little comment here from Brian's Kitchen. You love hanging out with other video creators, and this is the reason why I have this dedicated uh, live stream hangout. It's not really to grab as many viewers to jump into the live stream as possible, although a bigger audience is always better. But this is an opportunity for me to directly interact with you because in the other live streams, I'm always distracted by by the person I'm interviewing or the discussion I'm having with somebody uh, as a guest or the channel reviews where I don't get to look at your comments at all. But this is awesome and it, I really appreciate you saying that to know that this is valuable for you to talk to other video creators. Like, who knows, there may be private messages going on here and collaborations uh, started. And that's one of the things I, I love seeing in the chat there. So yeah, it, it really does really does warm the, the vidIQ heart to know that we're, we're having a, a positive impact there. Uh, we're getting some more stories here now of people losing subscribers. Fanatics4, you've lost a good 2,000 subscribers. You honestly don't mind people unsubbing. You prefer people who are genuinely interested uh, and and stay. I'd rather have 1,000 subscribers and they'd be active than 10 times as many inactive subs. Yep, you want that hardcore audience because ultimately they're going to be the ones that you build the foundation of your channel off. Just like here, I build the foundation of a vidIQ channel off of you guys uh, rather than the people asking for sub for subs in the comments, which is really irritating. Oh, thank you, Halo King. You're saying vidIQ is very helpful and the videos. Uh, which which is better? Is it the, the vidIQ tools or the videos? Um, again, my vanity would really help there depending on your answer. Uh, Tara Support, who is my oldest subscriber? We don't have, um, we have no idea on that, unfortunately. I don't think we get specific information on the, the age of subscribers. All right, then, let's move on to a, another topic. I'm going to cover this one very briefly because I did do a dedicated live stream on this um, on Wednesday, but I thought I'd just bring this up quickly and um, give you some of the bullet points here. Uh, the YouTube Creator blog was updated on Tuesday and it had uh, lots of um, new priorities and how they're going this year. Obviously, the top of the list was the, uh, the tragic events at the headquarters with the shootings, and it's a challenging time at the moment. And again... Our thoughts are with those people who are affected and uh, hopefully, uh, who knows, there may be some changes that stop this from happening in the future, but th who's to say that? Uh, let's not get too political here. Let's get on to the uh, YouTube uh, news. They did st state here, and I'm going to read out the things that highlighted in green. Over the last year, channels earning five figures annually has grown more than 35%. And while channels earning six figures annually grew by more than 40%. So people think that there's less opportunity here for um, on YouTube. And maybe that might be the case for smaller YouTubers. But for those who do make it and have the talents to produce awesome content and uh, have that break and I guess have that stroke of luck, if you can make it in YouTube, you have more potential to earn more on YouTube. Whether you agree or disagree with that, that's what YouTube are saying. Uh, a YouTuber also saying that they're trying to improve communication with their users. So replies have increased 600%. Uh, 
and reply rate has increased 75% on their Twitter handles. If you're not following any of these Twitter handles at the moment, I suggest you do because you do often get some useful information uh, from those YouTube han handles. Uh, and if you aren't subscribed to the Creator Insider channel, that's a really interesting channel to subscribe to. It's made by an in-house YouTube team. Production values are sometimes a bit questionable and they don't optimize their metadata, but you get to learn when new tools are coming out before anyone else knows. Really interesting stuff, so I do suggest you subscribe to them. Um, we go back to a monetization conversation here, but in February they made tough decisions, set new criteria, and creators are finding this fr frustrating. We know this very much so at vidIQ. And this one here is very telling. We've also heard of uh, from either delays in application processes are very frustrating, but they still give us this vague, vague answer of we are working to make this faster. That's not much use to you, really. You want a specific date, time, length of period to know when that's going to get fixed. On the flip side, once you are monetized, uh, they say that they're working on improving the accuracy, the accuracy of their ad detection. So whether uh, a video is advertiser unfriendly or not, that's apparently increased by 90%. We've heard less about demonetization, so we believe they're correct. And they're also saying that fifth, the appeals against these decisions is down 50% as well. Very interesting one here in that they're launching a new... Uh, service or pilot service where I think they're going to get video creators to self audit their content whereby they'll be ticking boxes to questions like do you think this content is deemed safe but what I think this also might do is give you potential strikes against your content like if you say it's safe then you get complaints that it's not safe from the audience YouTube may put some sort of advertisement strike against you still early days though so we're not sure uh, it feels like YouTube is trying to put the responsibility and onus on you as a video creator and taking it a little bit out of their hands. Maybe that's what advertisers have asked for. Uh, creators have also told us they want alternatives to make more money, and that could be testing top sponsorships. So kind of like Patreon, I guess. I think they're going to give more channels, just, and this is outside of gaming channels, the opportunity to have uh, an audience... Um, subscribe and become a sponsor um, directly. So could be interesting stuff there, all to come. Uh, they're expanding the community engagements, uh, the community tab here, uh, trying to improve how it works. I hope that the community posts you get from vidIQ are not too annoying at the moment. And they're trying to incorporate super chats into if this, then that. So maybe you can do some fancy graf graphics and pop-ups, send stuff to your mobile device for notifications. Uh, so there's a lot of tools going on um, here. Uh, what else have we got? In February, we announced uh, new steps beyond existing strike strike systems that we may take in the rare event that w if one creator's actions are risking um, harm against the entire community, we obviously know who that is, then they can take extreme measures. And I think in February or March, they took Logan Paul off the advertising network for a brief amount of time. So that was maybe a demonstration of them. Uh, bringing that act into force. A uh, new comment moderation has been added, and I think it's certainly helping our moderators do a better job of moderating, I think, which is awesome. And also, finally, in the learning and education section, I know YouTube are putting together a lot more Creator Academy content. I know Tim Schmoy has done some content and Roberto Blake. So if you haven't already visited the Creator Academy for tips and advice, where they basically tell you the nuts and bolts of what you should be doing in videos, uh, then definitely check that out. So lots of updates in that one single post from YouTube, uh, which is definitely worth uh, checking out there. I was just going through all of that very quickly. So if you do have any comments on that, uh, do post them in the comment in the live chat and I will try and get back to you uh, with what you think on those topics. Uh, Extra Sessions Media saying you're never going to use AdSense income, so it's not a priority, uh, but you've been an educational channel. Um, does that mean you're going to try and sell like educational products and services in the future as opposed to trying to do it through AdSense? That might be interesting to know. Brian's Kitchen is saying, you love Tim Schmoyer, yeah, where I, when I was first starting to create content, 
I'm I am certainly was and still am a Tim Schmeier disciple and I, I often mention him in some of the vidIQ videos I'd love to get him on vidIQ at some point uh, to talk more and he has done vidIQ videos before and so yeah we're big fans of Tim Schmeier as well Oh, VIP man is asking, are you doing one of these group channel review things today? We're not. I've, I've decided to move that group therapy channel review session to a Tuesdays because I think it's more in vibe with the uh, content that we do on a Tuesday. So I'm trying to keep this one purely as a casual chat type of thing. Uh, Real Estate Whisperer, your content has never been made for monetization, so you seem safe there. Would you ever consider monetizing your content if it blew up in the in in the future? Uh, it could be like free AdSense money to be gained there. There's always there's always that temptation when your channel starts to grow successfully. Uh, Extra Sessions Media saying that that he wouldn't monetize his content. The income would come from gear reviews. Uh, they. And gear reviews are a lost leader. They drive subs to the tu DJ tutorials. Fresh Start saying you're struggling to upload videos very often due to school. Really want to grow, but with limited time, it's a struggle. Um, try not to put yourself under too much pressure. If you can, if if you can, maybe one week produce three videos, then make those video three videos last over the course of three weeks, just so you have that one video a week consistency, and you are at school now. YouTube is probably not going anywhere at this point. Just keep uh, committing the, as much time as possible, uh, but make sure that you you stick um, you continue with your other priorities. As I'd say, I want to I want to do a classic thing where I say stay in school, chump. But I think that some might, some people might find that a little too um, aggressive. But yeah, just do what you can. Don't worry, YouTube's not going anywhere soon, and. Uh, your your creative outlet will still be here when you are on the holidays and spring break and Easter and the summer's coming up um, relatively soon if you are in the northern hemisphere. So maybe you've got a couple of months there to produce lots of video content. VIP man asks, does this vidIQ have a Discord server? I you know I have been thinking about maybe putting one together, but I have no experience of how to do it or how to manage it, and I'm not sure what the implications are of doing that. But it is in my head. We've just got all, so many exciting things uh, of priority coming up here at vidIQ. Uh, it's like, like a personal project there. haven't really had time to um, put any thought into it. So, yeah, pe people are um, having an interest in this Discord server. Um... But I just don't know how much uh, I would be able to police it and how and whether and how how popular they are. So I get, I'll tell you what, for you folks, I will try and do a bit more research into Discord servers for next Friday. And then we, we can maybe have a, another another chat about it. Minecraft girl, you've come to say that vidIQ really helps you. Oh, that's very good. Pleased to hear it. And you've reached 100 subscribers the other day. Uh, you are more than welcome. We're just here to help you. You are the guiding lights and you're the one spreading a message of value in your content. So it's it's thank you to you for um, changing people's lives on YouTube. Okay, uh, thanks for the offers of a Discord server, but it needs a lot more research before I go anywhere near the creation of one. Um, but yeah, I'll try and do some, um, I'll try and do more research into that for next week. Somebody's um, calling me by my full name here, which is a very formal and polite, polite. JT Wardle, dear Rob Wilson, how does a gaming channel grow from six subs to 100 subs? Uh, at this point, it's such a small channel. Just continue to make, create, create content on the game that you're passionate about. I mean, you didn't have any subs at one point. You have six subs now, so you've already made that first start, but it sounds as if you're very early on into your YouTube journey and story. So at this point, I would just concentrate on finding what you're passionate about in terms of gaming, finding the content that you're passionate about producing, 
and just continue to do that for the next, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 videos and see where that takes you. Okay, I just had one more thing that I wanted to show you in terms of general updates. Um, again, we did a huge video on this on uh, yesterday with Jeremy Vest. But uh, as a quick update, uh, we now have more channel analytics, which you can get from the Creator Studio beta. There should be a button at the bottom left-hand corner of your normal analytics called the, I think it's a Creator Studio beta button. It's in blue. And uh, just uh, there's loads of analytics that have come through here, but the, the focus you may want to check out in these new analytics is this kind of like the video creator's story uh, where first of all they try and you're trying to reach viewers and that comes through video impressions and click-through rate um, you want to analyze them to see if your thumbnails and titles are making an impact like as it shows here maybe we're just starting to improve a little bit on our own impressions and thumbnails uh, but you can click through all of these different metrics to look at these things once you have viewers in your content how do how long do they stay so we have the watch time which is so important on YouTube and gives you average view duration and then once you have an audience who's watching your content you want to know more about them such as how often do they watch their content it's telling us here that uh, viewers on our channel tend to watch two uh, viewers on our content tend to watch two of our videos um, so maybe we need to improve that now all of these metrics are fairly new so we won't really know too much about them until we've got some maybe two three months worth of data um, but yeah, you also get information there about demographics. So yeah, new analytics, definitely worth checking out uh, at um, YouTube Credit Studio. And we will be looking at those analytics ourselves uh, in the upcoming weeks and months and how to implement them into a vidIQ. And um, there's some really exciting stuff coming up here on vidIQ. Actually, maybe I'll just show you that now. We've got to go back to the Doberman's video here to look at that. But this is another reason why the Doberman guy's videos are doing well as well is that uh, we've added a video checklist optimization here so it just quickly goes through n not only your videos but other videos on YouTube to analyze where you may have missed out on things like the title here saying that it's optimized we judge titles between 20 and 60 characters to be about the right length yes you can do 100 characters but your titles tend to get cut off on previews after 60 characters less than 20 characters you're probably not including enough keywords uh, with titles as short as that and then we look at tags you should be doing at least 300 worth 300 characters worth of tags and then descriptions I think it's 900 characters I'd have to remember what the specifics are here and we are still working on this tool a little bit but it's something that you may have noticed in the video scorecard it's kind of like a bit of a reminder a checklist audit make sure that you've done all of these things on YouTube uh, to give your video the best possible chance of discoverability and of course the Doberman here gets full marks even sometimes we don't get full marks uh, for the uh, content that uh, for our video so <laughs> this is another reason why the Doberman's got 10x 100x growth in the last uh, couple of months there and we'll, yeah, so keep an eye on that and uh, another big audit tool coming soonish. Uh, kind of an under the wraps thing at the moment, but yeah, we've got some pretty big tools coming uh, very soon. Okay, and let's do, let's do a bit of a uh, general Q&A now. It's over to you. If you want to ask some general uh, YouTube questions, I will be more than happy to try and answer them to the best of my ability. We'll start with the Real Estate Whisperer here. Uh, what do you do What do you do you when you know someone is stealing your topics and video titles? So I guess the answer to that is that YouTube is big enough for everybody. And I guess imitation is the highest form of flattery. If they are copying your titles, are they, is their content successful? Are they, are they getting more views than you? If they are then maybe they've done something better than your content in some way and you need to go you need to visit their content and see if maybe they've got better thumbnails or uh, better video content in terms of a length or how it's presented um so uh, i mean there is no i guess intellectual property on tags and titles and then it's there's always going to be variations in the individual's creator 
Um, but you, you're going to see people using uh, similar titles and tags because that's kind of one of the things that we promote in that what you should do is find content that's successful on YouTube, uh, discover what titles and tags they're using, maybe use aspects of that content, but then also make it fit your own content. Uh, so I'd probably have to um, know a little bit more about, yes, so you're saying their videos suck. Um, now, is that just your personal opinion or is that reflect? If their videos suck, then they won't be getting any views, watch time or comments either. So in that case, you probably shouldn't have anything to worry about. Um, only, I guess, only consider their content of value if it is successful as well. I think would be the, the general... Um, the general response to that. But it, yeah, in terms of stealing, copying content, it's something that's done a lot on YouTube and that's how channels grow in one sense that you're latching on to the same topics that have been used by other successful people. Well, there we are. If, if they suck because nobody watches them, the Real Estate Whisperer, you've got, what have you got to worry about? They're not, they're not essentially stealing your audience. And if they were stealing your audience, uh, they may be doing something better than you. So I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, if, if they're not getting any views, then probably they'll get bored pretty quickly of producing content that's not reaching anybody. So, nah, wouldn't worry about it if I was uh, personally speaking. Uh, if one person is watching your live video, does that increase the watch time? Well, put simply, uh, any watch time on YouTube is counted as watch time. So let's say, for example, there's f uh, 50 people in this live stream now and you've all been watching for exactly an hour. That would be 50 hours worth of watch time. So yeah, that counts. Only if you deleted the video would that watch time effectively disappear. Um, I could give you a quick demonstration here of how um, how much watch time can, how much live streams can affect your watch time. We've been working on our live streams. That's one of the main things I wanted to work on this year on vidIQ. And here's the watch time for our live streams. You can see how the, these um, peaks here are definitely the live stream peaks. And probably these slightly smaller peaks are uh, where I've posted a regular video. So we're certainly benefiting from live stream uh, content. So if you want to think about doing some live streams to get watch time, if they're valuable, of course, then go for it. Uh, Brian's Kitchen, it boggles the mind how some people have millions of subscribers for the content they have. They, I guess the, the short, simple potential reasons could be they got into YouTube early and they were able to, at the time, the content they were producing was better than anybody else and now they've just established themselves. And I would always say... They must have millions of subscribers for a reason. And maybe you can't um, as associate with it because you're just not interested in that content. But their content is probably resonating so strongly with their audience, the people they care about, that that's, then that's something that y you need to try and understand. Understand, Like Logan Paul, for example, um, Paul, Jake Paul, perfect examples, very polarizing characters, hated by probably tens of millions of people, but, well, no, potentially hated by 100 million people, but loved and adored by tens of millions of people. And they said themselves that they're only interested in their own audience, which, credit to them, that's what's put them in that uh, position. So um, I would always say, just have a try and look at a channel objectively and see why they might be successful. Maybe you, there are things you disagree with on their channel, but their video editing style may be absolutely perfect and it's like high octane, quick, uh, quick pace, pattern interrupts that really resonates with their audience. Uh, yeah, delete Jedi Master. If you have a channel, if you have a video that's doing well, even if it's, if, if it's got nothing to do with your content now, I wouldn't delete it because it's not harming your channel in any way. It's probably adding some uh, authority to your channel in a sense. 
Uh, so I would just keep it up there and let it continue to do what it's doing. Uh, Kronos, you have two strikes community guidelines on your main channel. Should I private all your all all your videos? It's a very tough question to answer because I don't know what the content is. If you're getting community strikes, uh, you really need to understand why you're getting community strikes and learn from that. Uh, yeah, if, uh, I I mean, if the videos are already out and they haven't got community strikes, um, is a, is it worth putting them in private? But yeah, you're probably on very shaky, dangerous ground there. Um, so be careful. Yeah, Kronos, if you are posting the same question again, that's fine. Uh, sometimes I just can't see all the questions that are coming up because there's so many, so many things there. Uh, Hunter03, would it be okay if you, if you can use a clip of me speaking? Absolutely. If you want me to speak on your channel trailer, absolutely. If you want me to do a shout out, such as, hey, I'm Rob Wilson here uh, from vidIQ and you should subscribe to Hunter03. I command it. There you are. If you want to take that clip, go for it. Uh, uh, Nathaniel, I think, uh, if I pronounce your name correctly, my channel is Dutch and unique here, but people still do not subscribe a lot or find my channel. I'm growing but very slowly. I have sweet viewers, but how can I grow? Um, so you have one of these uh, unique situations where you have a, you're producing content in a different language and there always feels to be more opportunities in other languages for YouTube. Um, I don't know what your content is about. Um, so we go back to the um, fundamentals type of talk here. Find out what you're most passionate about and then answer the questions the other pa that your passionate audience is wanting to know and has not been answered yet, or you can answer better. I'd have to, it's one of those where I'd have to probably be on the channel trailer, not channel trailer, the channel review live streams to give you more help there. Uh, so Extra Sessions Media, one of our moderators is uh, jumping in to have a quick, he, he like moderating other channels now and uh, it looks as if you might be posting uh, duplicate content, um, which, which may get you community strikes. How can we, uh, Instant Hub here has, how can, can we use different videos and make a compilation with a new music and title to modify it? Yeah, if you're like doing a montage, I don't see, that's one of the things that people tend to do for trailers. As long as that music is um, safe and there's no copyright restrictions against it, I don't see why there's an issue to use reuse um, clips from other content. Absolutely, go for it. Is average minutes watched just as important as audience retention? I think the answer to that seems to be it's it's just overall watch time is the most important thing. Um, for our, if we want to go into it in a bit more detail, if you think about audience retention, if people maybe watch seventy percent of your content, they've that that means that they've probably liked your content and they're likely to watch more of your content because they've watched they've got so far into a video. If you kind of have a one hour video which has maybe an average watch time of a couple of minutes, three or four minutes, it may be that they're exiting YouTube completely because they're bored of your video. And that's um, an end session, which is bad for your content. So the short answer is watch time is most important, but then there, are, there could be other factors that uh, may influence it. Like, I produce content on vidIQ, which is the 60 second one. So we get hardly any watch time from them, but we do get good engagement from them. And people say that they absolutely love the quick 60 second videos, which is why I keep doing them. But they could potentially be harming the channel because we get less watch time. But vidIQ is a little different because we're not necessarily trying to get all the watch time in the world and all the views in the world. We're wanting to provide the most valuable message to our uh, customers and to you YouTubers 
uh, so that you either uh, take that advice onto your own channels or uh, download the vidIQ uh, products and ultimately it would be awesome if you um, bought one of our um, tiers but just just to know that you're using YouTube as a resource uh, using vidIQ as a resource is uh, good enough for for us nerd Schmerd, is it bad to use similar? more popular channel names in your tags to get someone searching for them to see your content. That is a terrible idea. Uh, it's That's effectively um, tag stuff. Um, is that the right word? Tag stuffing. If you are just using other channels' names to try and latch onto their content and your content has nothing to do with those channel names, that is effectively against YouTube's terms of service and you could receive a copyright, uh, you could receive a, a community strike, uh, ban channel, so don't do it. Uh, try and avoid that as much as possible. Bad idea. Any more questions here? We're one hour 20 into this live stream. See if I can um, stretch this one out to uh, 90 minutes before we disappear for uh, the weekend. So, um, really say you're asking, you don't understand why people steal, uh, steal other videos. I understand clips are a rant review. So, what, what the reason is, is because let's say um, they're just trying to make a quick book. And this is why YouTube have clamped down on, um, on small YouTube channels about having 1,000 subscribers and um, 4,000 hours of watch time. Some channels just try and steal content from channels that get millions of views and put it on their channel. And if just by chance, by copying all the metadata and stuff, just by chance, if that video gets a million views, um, it may they may have a chance to just monetize it very briefly. Or that's presumably what was happening with a lot of these um, copying content ones. And it's, it's easy to do as well. There's like no effort required. So yeah, it's terrible and people do it and then they confuse why their channel gets taken down but that's the mentality of some video well they're not even video creators at this point they're just almost like it's like youtube money laundering youtube view laundering i think is the best way i can come up with a um, response to that hey hey here we go a super chat from neens Cotido. apologies if i pronounce your name wrong that is a 10 wow 10 canadian dollars i live in vancouver i can do something with 10 canadian dollars Thank you very much. Very humbled by the super chat. Uh, great products, you're saying. Helpful info. Info. VidIQ helped our cat channel grow. Yes, awesome. We are feeding YouTube with more cat videos. That is amazing. Or is it? Do you want to see more cat videos? No, I'm joking. Uh, thank you for the contribution. Neen, if you want to let us know, you don't have to give us another super chat, but let us know how big is your channel now. Oh, we'd love to find out. Um, um, what is the name of your cat, uh, more importantly? Uh, I think that's a big question that everybody wants to know. But, yeah, thank you again for the super chat. Uh, really appreciated. Um, uh, yeah, where else are we looking at now? Uh, JT Wardle, again, formally saying, Dear Rob Wilson, if I play a game with a Twitch streamer and use her name and a title and tags, is that bad? No, because you that's effectively a form of collaboration. As I say... If you are doing maybe a some commentary or uh, an educational piece on a YouTuber, or if it's something about that YouTuber, then that's fine. You can use you sh you can and probably should use their tags. Um, it's still going to be very difficult to rank, but if the content is about that video creator, then it's, it's it has value. Absolutely. You will find that if you put something in about why I hate Logan Paul and then the first 30 sec seconds has got nothing to do with Logan Paul, even though it's got loads, loads, of, Paul tag, lo loads of Logan Paul tags, your view duration is just going to plummet. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look something like that. There we go. It's going to look something like that in the first 30 seconds and your channel, your content is not going to be... Um, so, uh, your content is not going to be shared anyway. It's surfaced by YouTube. Uh, Instant Hub with a question. Does repeating a description have something to do with YouTube policy if it's related to your videos? I'm not sure what you mean about repeating descriptions. A lot of YouTubers have like a template 
a part of a description that includes social media links, maybe frequently asked questions. But the first paragraph or two should always be very unique to the content because that's where YouTube is indexing your content, finding keywords in your content. And every video is going to be a little bit different. I have a slightly different keywords. So so they, they're not necessarily exactly the same anyway. So not sure exactly where you're going with that. But I think descriptions where you have a certain portion of it identical is fine because YouTube have the descriptions template, but the the there should always be a significant amount of time and effort put into the description of the particular video that you're uh, producing content on. Okay, so Neen's uh, Catch... Ah, right, I understand the channel name now. Uh, Nine's Cat Studio. Is that how you pronounce it? Nine Cat Studio. Nine's Cat Studio. You make educational videos with the help of your cats, something that is unique. It's a... Uh, it's BB's Cat Studio, Cat Studio. We grew 2,700 hours in three months and almost 1,000 subscribers. So by my calculations, within the next month, you should have 4,000 hours of watch time and you should be able to monetize your content. Congratulations. I think with cat educational videos, you probably want to be um, thinking about some sponsorship, branding uh, with other uh, cat people, I guess. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, your your real estate whisper. You see, you've got potentially the perfect opportunity here to do some uh, hero content where you critique Logan Paul's uh, house buying decisions. That would be re that might be a really interesting comical um, little video to put together. There, uh, it's like it starts off really nice and pristine, and then within twenty four hours, it's a dumpster fire type of um, video. Uh, hello there, the Tevin Show. I'm not. I've, um, I'm sorry to say that we're going to be uh, signing off in a, a few hours. Uh, so, oh, so, sorry. Um, take that back. I'm not signing off in a few hours. I'm signing off in a few minutes. I have been thinking about doing uh, like a vidIQ marathon, maybe one day, where we're just on for like eight hours just to see what happens. But I'm not doing that today. Just let me stress. I've done about eight hours worth of live streaming already this week. So I'm um, ready for a break. <clears throat> So uh, PD, uh, PNW Granny, Vo uh, Granny, you say that your voice is, you've been told that your voice is re very relaxing to try and keep them from falling asleep. That's a, a useful YouTube talent to have. Maybe you should create a series of videos where you're talking uh, just about random stuff to keep, was it to keep people awake or to send them to sleep? I, I didn't quite um, interpret that correctly. Digital Jedi Master, you've noticed larger YouTubers uploading their content to Facebook and YouTube, but on separate weeks and slightly tweaked. Any idea why this is a strategy? Yeah, to reach a, a large, larger audience. Even though we're a YouTube product, we do post our videos natively to Twitter and Facebook. And by natively, I mean we upload the videos directly to there because YouTube and Twitter can sometimes suppress the content from uh, other platforms and we also change we tweak it by adding subtitles because videos played through twitter and facebook uh are usually start usually start with no sound so it's important to have uh captions in there to help draw the viewer into the content so yeah it's just to reach a wider audience and maybe to diversify their um uh, income stream platforms and diversify their audience like perhaps they've got 10 million subscribers um, potentially they could have a million Facebook followers as well. And I guess it's always, it, it can be, um, it can be good to just make sure that if anything, if YouTube suddenly did something very weird, like they snap their fingers and that just kills your channel, then at least their audience can be reached on, on another platform. And they've probably got uh, a team of people behind them, which allows them to, uh, do that. Yeah. RV did a live stream of over 15 hours. I'm not ready for that yet. I, I could. I, I'm exhausted after two hours. So a, a 15 hour live stream might just be the end of uh, Rob Wilson here at VidIQ. All right, folks. We are one hour, 28 minutes into this live stream, and as always, it's been absolutely fantastic spending uh, the beginnings of a weekend with you. Uh, but I have some VidIQ duties that I need to attend to here uh, to make sure that everything is running smoothly uh, for the upcoming week's worth of content. 
Uh, stay tuned for weekend content. I've just been experimenting and finding out whether we do have an audience join, um, joining vidIQ content at the weekend. So, uh, yeah, I think I might post some stuff this weekend. Uh, do start saying your goodbyes now, and I'll do lots of shout-outs uh, in a couple of seconds. Uh, I just want to say, yeah, this, this has been one of the best, I think, uh, Friday live streams we've had so far. It's like a lot of uh, fun and banter, and now that I'm getting to know more of you on a, uh, I guess, digital personal level where I can remember the conversations we've had before, it feels a lot more like a community and like just uh, friends having a good chat. And one day, hopefully, I want to try and work out a way of how I can just quickly invite people onto the live stream who we trust just to just have some chat. That would be awesome stuff. But yeah, things I still need to work on, like I'm three months, three and a half months now into this live stream experiment, but things are going well. So goodbye to you, Fanatics4. Uh, take it easy, Bazzy Mental, Kronos, goodbye to you, Beanie Jaws. Cheerio, uh, g'day, uh, Tara Sport, goodbye to you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to promise that I will do a channel review for you on Tuesday. Just see if you can let the moderators know. Both Extra Sessions Media and Doberman Guy are here. So uh, remember, we need to do a channel review for Tara Support on Tuesday. Uh, Kronos is saying that Discord is a bad idea, so thanks for that. Uh, Real Estate Whisperer, goodbye to you too. Feel as if you've been the MVP, most valuable poster in this one. We've had a lot of uh, uh, good interchanges there, and I'm looking forward to the uh, Logan Paul um, real estate video that you're going to put together. JT Wardle, thank you. It's still formally pronouncing my name. <laughs> Appreciate that. Have a good weekend. Mario Monta, goodbye to you. Bye to both of these moderators, Doberman Guy and Extra Sessions Media. Uh, quick uh, ha um, clapping hands to you there. See you later, Brian's Kitchen. Uh, ABC, yeah, that's an interesting way of saying goodbye. Nerd Schmerd, I think you're fast becoming the channel with the uh, best username in these live streams. Nines Cat Judio, it's a bit difficult to pronounce, but an interesting username and awesome news with the um, success of your channel. Uh, Peddling for Paul, take care to you. Hunter03, I'm glad that you got your shout out. Goodbye to you. Everybody. Enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for now.